History is a lie. What happened to the black Jews when they were expelled from Spain and Portugal? From the Jews and Moors in Spain. Page 195. On the 30th of March, 1492, the edict for the expulsion of the Jews from Spain was signed by the Spanish sovereigns at Granada. Heralds proclaimed from the street corners of every hamlet and village and city of Spain that all unconverted Jews, of whatever sex or age or condition, should depart from the realm before the expiration of four months, never to revisit it, on any pretext whatever, under penalty of death. These are sad words fraught with anguish and despair, yet however sad, however despondent and hopeless, however much of grief and anguish and despair they convey, they befell the Jews of Spain and they fail altogether when they are asked to describe the sufferings and miseries which met the unfortunate exiles everywhere in their fruitless search for a quiet spot where they might live or die in peace. Ships stood ready in the harbors to carry nearly all of the banished 300,000 Jews whithersoever it suited the captain's best. Into these ships the exiles were literally packed, crowded together without regard to sex or age, often mother torn from child, husband from wife, brother from sister, friends from friends, and separated on the coast meant separation forever. The expulsion edict had prohibited the Jews, under penalty of death, from having money in their possession at their departure, and the Jews obeyed the mandate. What cared they for money when they could not enjoy it in their beloved Spain? What cared they for enjoyment or even for life when it was to be lived in distant and hostile lands? But the pirate captains and their heartless crews felt convinced that the Jews must have large sums of money sewed up in their clothes or concealed on their persons. No sooner were they on high sea when men and women and children were ordered on deck, commanded to disrobe publicly, regardless of innocence of youth and modesty of sex. Many a virgin and many a youth, many a husband and many a wife dared to resist. Not that they had money con concealed, but for shame's sake. And the raging billows rocked them into their eternal sleep for their resistance. Disappointed in their search, their thirst for gold was the more excited. Body after body they ripped open before the eyes of the unfortunate exiles in the belief that they must have swallowed their gold and precious jewels. And disappointed in this, there followed a scene, a more detestable and dastardly one the sun never shone upon. When the sailors had finally satiated their brutal lusts upon the innocent and helpless, and faint from terror and torture, and when the still surviving victims had been made to cleanse the ships from every trace of the blood of their friends and kin, they were seized and dropped into the ocean without a pang of conscience, and as unconcernedly as if the great God had created Jews for no other purpose but to appease the beastly appetites of inhuman sailors and serve as food for the fishes of the sea. Wearily they made their way onward, until at last they beheld the joyous sight of human settlements. Exhausted they lay along the coasts, wasted by suffering and disease, and half demented from starvation. Down to the shore came the priests, and holding a crucifix in the one hand and provisions in the other, the unfortunate Jews were given the choice between Christ and starvation. The flesh was stronger than the spirit. They begged for the bread and ate at it ravenously, after the few drops of baptismal water had cleansed their soul from the foulest stains of infidelity. Nearly 150,000 souls made their way by land to Portugal, whose king, John II, dispensed with his scruples of conscience so far as to allow his greed to triumph over his creed. He granted them a passage through his dominion on their way to Africa and the permission of an eight months stay in his realm in consideration of a tax of eight dollars a head, which immense sum he levied from the native Portuguese Jews. To their misfortune, the plague broke out in Portugal and raged with deathly fury. Immediately, the church arose, 
held the Jews responsible for the visitation of the plague and lashed the populace into a relentless fury because of the visitation of the plague and the breach of contract on the part of the Jews. The king's creed awoke again simultaneously with the reawakening of his greed. He issued an edict which threw even that of Torquemada into the shade. All Jewish children below 14 years of age were torn from their parents' arms, dragged into the church, baptized. Those under three years of age were given to Christians to receive a Christian education, or in other words, to be raised as slaves. Those between three and ten years of age were put on board of a ship and conveyed to the newly discovered unwholesome island of St. Thomas called Ilhas Perdidas, the Isles of Perdicion, which was colonized by Portuguese condemned criminals to fare there as best they could. Those between ten and fourteen years were sold as slaves. Then indeed, the cup of their affliction was full to the brim. I will not enlarge on the cruelty and the avarice which they frequently experienced from the masters of the ships which transported them from Spain. Some were murdered to gratify their cupidity, others forced to sell their children for the expenses of the passage. End quote. I hope you will forgive the length of this video, even though I left out so much. Let's end the video by reading where these Jews ended up settling after the dispersion. Many of the Portuguese Jews settled and became prosperous in the Indies, in southern France, and in Hamburg. Others settled in the Netherlands and became especially prosperous in Holland. From Holland, large numbers of the descendants of the Portuguese and Spanish exiles entered England through the intercession of Manasseh ben Israel with Oliver Cromwell, and from England and from the Indies and from Italy, they entered the United States. This book is free to access on Internet Archives, or you can use our direct link on Patreon, link in bio, like and share for more lost history. And that's why we say...